Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to go over my game plan to take care of two common issues with the EcoBoost. Um, I have a Gen 1, which is, I've heard these are fairly common, but I've also heard some of the Gen 2 guys have had uh, similar issues. And so the two things I'm talking about are, one, uh, an exhaust manifold leak. Um, and it sounds like this weird, like whirling, chirping sound, especially under like a high load or like, um, fast acceleration, and that's caused by an, a, the exhaust manifold warping and uh, tending to uh, break off a rear stud, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and obviously that causes, uh, causes a loss of power and it's an annoying sound, it's not, it's not uh, pref preferable. So, and the second issue that is fairly common uh, would be overheating while towing. And it's not common to overheat while towing in a, under normal circumstances, but under uh, like a high stress um, situation for the truck, uh, a lot of guys have overheating issues where they'll go into limp mode and uh, have to let their truck cool down before they'll continue up uh, whatever hill they're climbing. So some of those um, conditions are usually you're on a long, steep grade, um, so the truck is constantly working and constantly uh, under boost to uh, get you up that hill. Second thing is hot temperatures. So when you're over like, you know, 100 plus degrees having issues, but also guys um, will have issues at lower temperatures sometimes, um, you know, in the, in the 90s or so. Uh, high altitude is another factor where the truck has to work extra hard to make, make enough power to get you moving. Low humidity, uh, when the truck doesn't have evaporative cooling, on the radiator, uh, it, it doesn't shed as much heat. So um, that's, a, that's obviously a, a more of a challenge for it than a high humidity. And all of those factors combined, you're, you're kind of in a, putting yourself in a region in the United States and that's kind of like the Southwest. A lot of guys in Arizona have issues and a lot of guys in Utah have issues. And as you, uh, you might know, I recently moved to Utah. so. I wanted to uh, take care of this. I, I, I have gone into limp mode one time and I've gotten close several times. So um, I want to fix it once and for all. Um, and I decided to do this all at one time because to, uh, to replace your exhaust manifold, that means you have to take the turbos off. If you take the turbos off, that means you have to uh, drain the coolant. And if you're going to um, drain the coolant, I might as well put in, put in the uh, new radiator. And if I'm going to replace the radiator, I might as well replace the transmission cooler because um, obviously the, I have to disconnect the, uh, the transmission lines at the location. Might be kind of an excuse, but uh, I figured because the, radi the uh, transmission cooler is also in that coolant loop, it's going to help as well. And I'm also going to bypass the, um, the stock oil cooler, which uses coolant. And I'm going to go to a, an air cooler, which I'll show you in a second. All right, so here's, here's everything I'm putting into the truck to uh, try to fix these issues. I'll start going down the line. These are, this is just hardware mostly, and I'll cover some of that in a, in a second. But... The, uh, to solve the root cause of the issue, I'm going to replace the existing OEM manifolds, which are pretty anemic compared to these. I'll, I'll do a comparison in a later video. But these are CR Performance Engineering manifolds, a direct drop-in replacement for the OEMs. But these are way more burly. They, they have a much thicker flange, and also the ports have been opened up to improve flow. They do claim a power gain on this, which I'll, I'll talk about in a later video as well. And so if I'm gonna take the turbos off, I figured it'd be a perfect time to also replace the OEM turbo adapters. So this is a unit from SPD. And basically what these turbo adapters do is, that, well, they've opened up the, uh, the hole in the back here 
which you know promotes flow because it's, it's a larger opening. And they've also um, kind of shaved down the edges here to kind of give the air an easier path to flow instead of being like a hard edge to get around. So that's the thought process on these. And I think they claim 10 to 15 horsepower, something like that. And again, I will, uh, I'll go over that more in depth at a later time. But um, I figured it's a pretty cheap mod to do. And I, while I had the turbos off and everything like that, it was the perfect time to do it. All right, the last three items I have are all from Full Race. The first one being this oil cooler that's made specifically for the F-150. So it, it has a vehicle-specific mounting bracket here. Comes with a thermostatic sandwich plate. Comes with some really nice high-quality hoses here, some braided lines. And then it comes with a set wrap. I, I hope that's how you pronounce it. Comes with a set, set wrap core, which is super nice. Moving on, I have a, I got a transmission cooler. I think this is about twice as tall as the stock one. So hopefully that, that reduces the load on the, on the coolant, on the cooling system and, um, and helps keep the engine temps cold. I've never, I've never had an, an issue with the trans getting too hot, but the thought process is that that's just another uh, element that's introducing heat into the system. So last we have what I think is the most gorgeous piece that I have today. It's this gorgeous radiator that's incredibly shiny. I don't know how they how they did that. But it's a uh, full aluminum unit with aluminum end tanks. So that's really nice. I'm excited to get this all installed. And last but not least, I'll just show you kind of a couple of the other small knickknacks I needed to get. So obviously, I needed to get a lot of like gaskets. So here's your layered metal gaskets for the manifolds. Here's your various nuts and bolts and um, other random gaskets for the turbos and whatnot. So that all I got from a... Uh, <clears throat> I just got from a Ford distributor, which uh, is way cheaper than the dealer would cost. So uh, I, I highly recommend that. And the last thing I'll go over is this is a, let me think, this is a coolant hose from a, I think it's a non-turboed V6 uh, Ford truck or a F-150. So basically what this allows you do, to do is it allows you to bypass um, the stock oil cooler so that way you're feeding water directly to the water pump instead of splitting it to go to the oil cooler so hopefully that in combination with everything else is able to solve my problem and I'll get more into depth on some of this stuff as I install it uh, at a later time all right so I know that was a quick overview um, my game plan is as I do this to uh, make videos along the way and kind of go in depth on each item and, uh, and show you how it's um, supposed to be better and how it's supposed to help things. So wish me luck. It, it's been a little bit of a challenge so far getting the turbos off. Uh, wasn't super fun. It, uh, the truck's only got, it's got like 86,000 miles on it. So it's not incredibly old, but you know, it's what, eight years at this point, eight years and 86,000 miles. So the turbos weren't, uh, didn't just come off uh, super nicely, but I think in the end it'll be worth it. So um, let me know if you guys have any questions and uh, watch out for uh, the incoming content. So thanks.